So in 14C, what we're going to look at is um, President's Tables and Activity um, Networks. So networks can be um, used to organise schedules. So what will happen, there are two rules for these sorts of networks. Um, so one, an acti one activity named on the edge cannot can be completed until the ones before have been done. So this is what happens. So we get these scheduling things where we're going to say the activity is on the e is the edge. So they might say that edge takes like five minutes and then any activity that comes out of that, so, you know, the next activity connected to that one, it can't be done until it's, you know, done. So say like if you were, you know, cooking the toast, the toast comes out, then the butter can't go on the toast until the toast's been cooked. So, you know, the next activity can't happen until the one before is done. Okay, so the same activity cannot be completed in two different ways. So, you know, we can't say, all oh, right, we'll cook the toast, you know, another way and to get the butter. No, the toast is just cooked the same way and then we'll just have to wait until we get that done. Okay, so for any project, um, if activity A must be completed before activity B can begin, then activity A is be is said to be an immediate predecessor okay so it means it has to ha a has to happen and be completed before b okay so the activities within the project can have multiple immediate um, predecessors and these are usually recorded in a table called a president's table the information in a president's table can be used to draw a network and this is called an activity network okay so sketching these activity work um, networks activities have that have no immediate um, pre predecessors follow um, follow from the start vertex. So you'll have you'll see it in a minute. We have a start vertex, and then if they have no beginning, so maybe our first ob you know we said that the you know we've got the we've got the bread that's the start, and then bang into the toaster that's the first activity. So activities that are not immediate predecessors for others lead into the finish one. So then you'll have the finish vertex. And for every other activity, look for which activities, um, have what their immediate predecessors are, and then when you construct it. So let's have a bit of go, and that'll make it a little bit easier. So we've got this example here, and they've given us one of those president, pre president's table. And yeah, I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry. Um, for Frida's morning schedule. So here she's got the activity A is going to be um, her prepare, bre um, prepare breakfast. So she's getting ready. B is she cooks breakfast. So you can see B couldn't happen until she's done A. Isn't that right? Because you got to prepare it and then you'll cook it. Okay, and then she eats it. Now she can't eat it before she's cooked it. So, and then you can see. So... You can see the immediate, so when she eats the breakfast, she those predecessors would have had to be, um, uh, to, she has to do B, she has to cook it. Now, if you see E, if you look down the thing, it says E is get dressed and G is download an email. So those activities she could do before she eats breakfast. They're not connected really. So you can see, and they've changed that around. So what we're gonna do is we'll draw, it says draw a, an activity <coughs> network for these activities. And it says a tip, you may find it easier to draw the activity network from the finish back to the start. I don't know, I don't think so. Sometimes you might, I don't think drawing the whole thing like that helps. So let's just start. So it says, so we're going to start here. So I've got, oops, sorry, got to go to pen. So I'm starting with, um, this is the start. Okay, so the first one was A, so she prepares breakfast. So I might go, all right, so out I'm going to come with, this is going to be activity A. She's preparing breakfast. Okay, now... If you look in the table up here, so once A's happen, you can see that activity um, B, its predecessor is A. 
So that means that B must come after A. So then I could draw a thing and then this activity I might say is here I've got B. Okay, so B's happening at the moment. Then after, then it says when we look the next one, we've got C. Now C is, um, it ha what happens before C is B, E and G. So, all right, so I know B leads into C, so I'll say that one. So I can put C here. But also I know that E also le led into I'm going to put E there because it's saying that E was a predecessor to C and it also said that G was a predecessor. So I might just draw another one in and I'll draw G like that, okay? Because I don't know where they've come from, but I like, well, at the moment and I'll keep going. Okay, so in the next one, it says D, what happened before D? That would be its immediate predecessor, A. So then I could have a, um, I could have, all right, D's got to come out of here. Now, if you look, we're up to E. Now, it said E, it actually happened, D happens before. So now I can probably draw a vertex and I can connect that up. Everyone's graph might look a little bit different, you know, because how you, I mine always seem to be curvy. I don't know, the ones in the books like have all these lines, but it's all the same thing as long as it's connected. So then we have a look at, we've done E. So now we're up to F and F had um, C and H happening before it. So, all right, so I'm gonna go and look. So F came out of C. So I'm just changing color, doesn't matter. All right, so we had, we know F, but it also, F also had H happening. So I'll just draw, a H coming into F and then so we've done F now G had A happening before it so that way I'll go all right so I'll just connect it up like that sorry it became a curvy line but same thing so G was connected had A happening before it and then the last one was H now H had B happening before it so that means it was connected like that. And it also said E, but can that's true with my diagram. I can see E came into that one, came into H, and so did G. So can you see then that all worked out? And then this F must have led into the finish. Okay, so there's a diagram. They may draw straight lines and doesn't matter. It's all the same. So the below is an activity or project network. On the right is the, how do you say it? President, president's table, whatever it is. I can't say that word. Precedence, sorry. Precedence table. Okay, it says, explain what the column headed um, predecessor means um, using examples from the table. So let's, let's explain what that means. So what it means is the edges um, or the activities, because remember edges are activities, that come from, that come immediately before um, that um, specific activity. So it said to use an example. So you could say, if you look, for example, you might say, um, if you look at C, okay, so C, A have, happens before C. So you can see that A needs to happen before C happens, okay? Now, if you looked at um, E, E, a also has to happen before E, and you can see that there, see? So A happens before E, and it also said, um, you can see H had A happening, and you can see that too, yeah? So if it said, explain what um, the column headed predecessor, so you might say in the, I will just say, for example, um, 
I was, uh, oh, sorry, I'll say I occurred immediately before activities um what was it c e and h yeah and you might you know we put a little thing there okay so with this one they want us to um write to complete the table sometimes this is a little bit easier so if we look at activity a not it's at the start so nothing happened before it and the same with activity b now if i look at activity c which is along here what what led into that i'm going to the highlighted red vertice what led it led a. into that yeah so a so a is a pre Decessor of C. Now, if you look at D, what else? What led into D? A. a. So that's A there as well. Okay. And then if you look at the next one, look at um, E. What what came into E? So if you look, yep, yeah, you got C, B, and C. So you'd write that um, B and C. They often in the answers they write it alphabetical order. It doesn't matter if you didn't, didn't and you wrote it not. That's still the same answer. So F. What about F? What came into F? B, C, and E. Oh no no no. Sorry no. Just B and C. Sorry. Take that back. All right. G. We've got D and E. Good. H. We've got D and E. Pardon? Okay. Hey, uh, what about I? I had H. I's here. Um, J is F and G. K is F and G. L is I and J. And M is H. Okay. Okay, so let's practice drawing one. Now, drawing them is a little, I often find it a little, I find it a bit more difficult. But what happens is you get better practicing this. So this is where this chapter is crucial to keep practicing because you do get better at it. So what I found is um, to don't put a dot at the end of the activity until like what I was doing at the start, I've found that a little bit better. You don't get locked in and to doing the wrong thing. So let's have a look at this one. So to help you, let's have a, I'll try and do some colors so that you can see. So A and B don't have anything happening immediately before. So that means that they are starting activities. So if you think about it, I'm gonna draw a start and I've got, I'm just gonna draw A, and I'll draw a B coming out, yeah? So this is where I'm saying don't put a dot at the end of that activity because let's wait to see if that um, if A and B are immediately before something else. So then if you have a look, we see that C is immediate, has A immediately before. So now I'll draw my dot and I'll draw my C, um, C activity, okay? So I've done that one. And then I keep going down the table, so I've done that. So then I look at D. D's also has A immediately coming um, before it. So then I'll just draw another one coming out of the end of A. So this will be D. And that, once again, just leaving it hovering until I work out everything else. All right, then I might look at the next one. It said E um, had B immediately before it okay so all right okay i'll end b and i'll start e okay and then we're looking at what are we up to f has c all right so i can end that and i might put f okay and then so i've done that one i'm up to g now g had d and e 
So this is where I go, okay, these two both lead into um, this, uh, this G. So I'm going to draw G. Okay, so I know that at least happened. And then you get down to this last one. So I'm just going to do it in um, a similar color. So H, H has F and G. So I'll go, okay, so now I'm going to, I need to join these F and G. Both happened before H. Okay, and there's H. And then H is the last one. So we have, that's the finish. Okay, so now we're going to look at dummy activities. So what a dummy activity is, is an activity, it is an edge that is added to an activity network diagram to indicate that it has to happen immediately before another activity. But a dummy activity is represented using a dotted line and it and is usually given the name dummy or D. A dummy activity is generally drawn so that two vertices are connected by at most one edge. So it note that a dummy activity has um, a time allocation of zero. So just to explain it here, so what happens if you have a look down here at um, activity A? So you had activity A, sorry, change the highlight, activity A, and you can see it led into D like that, okay? But then, and then you also had B, B came out of the start, okay? Now, B, other than that, B is a, uh, it's a predecessor to D. So, but it's not going to be, um, I can't connect it to like A, we can't have, you can't, you know, join the line in, otherwise it'll look the same as A, activity A, but it's not. So what happens is you put this little line to say this is the dummy activity. So it still has to happen um, before D can happen. So B has to be completed as well as A before D happens, but they are separate activities, okay? So, and then you can see down here, B also has to happen before E can happen. So, but C's not affected by it. And it C's also a predecessor of E. So if I have to have this, but I want B to be finished as well, we've got to put this dummy activity in there. All right. So um, let's go and show and we'll see, a, um, we'll see it in a problem. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So the following um, pre... Oh, I can't say this. Present, how do you say it again? Precedence. Precedence table indicates when certain tasks need to be done during a project. So what you can see, um, if you go through, it says state the difficulty when attempting to draw the activity network. So what you can often see is when you see a um, repeated predecessor. So if you have a look... Um, you've got a G here, and it's happening before F. And then later down here, you see a G again, okay? And it has to happen before J does. So what you'll see is that, um, so you've got the problem is that it, cr it creates a parallel edge. So did you see before with A and B, if I connected it, it was going to create a parallel edge. So the problem is it creates a parallel edge and we can't have them in a activity network, like a scheduling network. So it creates a parallel edge um, between G and um, H and we don't want to have that. So we're going to see that we need a dummy, um, a dummy activity here. So, and how can the difficulty be resolved? So let's go and draw it. And you probably would have started off drawing this. So you can see A is the first activity. So if you say here's the start and we've got nothing happens before A. So off I drew and I draw A. Okay, then you look at it. If I can see all these other A's here, uh, so B, C and D all have 
A happening before it. So I might just draw off like that. I'm going to say B, C, and D. Okay, so I've done them. Then E comes out of B. All right, so I'll go back to there. So I'll draw a, a line and I've got E coming out. Then I've got F if um, has C and G happening. Uh, so F has C and G. So at the moment, all right, so F had C, but it also had G have coming out. So I'm going to add this. No, I'm going to put G in there. So I know there must be G's happening now. Okay. And then we go to the next one. So we've done this. Now G comes before D. So then that makes sense. I can go, all right, I can connect this guy. He's done that. He's obviously doing that. Okay. So we've done that. Um, so G had D. Now H also has D, so H can come out of that one. Okay, and then we look at the next one. Um, I had E and F. So, all right, I'm joining these ones in together now because then came I. Now, J had C, G and H. So, if J has... Um, J has C, G, and H. So if you look, if I drew one out from here, yeah, we could have, um, say we have, if I drew it out from here, we have J, and it would have the C and G, but it doesn't have the H connected to it, does it? If I drew J out from here, but J is also, H has to happen beforehand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw J coming out of here. Oh, oh my God, sorry. I'm going to draw J coming out of H, because which is what it's saying. H is a predecessor. So I'm going to draw J coming out of H. And because it also has to have C and G happening before it, I just draw a little dummy. And this is where I draw the dummy the dummy line so it is like connecting them and but it's a dummy line so this is where we're putting the dummy so you can see I'm putting the dummy here now if you look at it we saw G and G um, happened so see how at the end of here up at the start of F start of F we saw G and at the start of and at the start of J, we see G. So you can see, you can put the dummy, you know to put the dummy between the start of F and the start of J. Okay, and then the last one, K, had I and J. So these guys connected into K. And then we had K and we had the finish. Okay. Let's have a look at this one. So fill in the table. I'm not going to stop saying that word now. Um, fill in the table for the activity shown. So let's have a look. A doesn't have anything happening before it. Either does B, either does C. What leads into E? Yeah, we have um, A. What leads into F? B and what else? C. So that dummy thing indicates to me that C has to occur before F does. Okay. What about G? Just C. What about H? E. But what about um, I? Just has G. Now, be careful. What about J? What's coming into J? Yeah. So that, that dummy code let... Um, e happen as well. E, F, and I. And what about um, K? K is J and H, or H and J, doesn't matter. All right, all good. Okay, so we've got an example of a, a network up here with some scheduling. So you can see that it's got the numbers. 
and the activities. And so what we're going to do here is they're asking us to fill in the table. So if we go through, you can see what's missing there. We have to put the activity and then you put the duration. So because um, next to A, it has a two. So I know the duration is two. And then we have to say what the predecessors for A or um, what they are. But A is at the start. So we put a dash to say there's no predecessors. So then we've got, if we look at activity B, it has a duration of one and it also has no predecessors and C has a duration of five and no predecessors. So then the next one that um, A, B, C, let's, we, let's do uh, even, we'll do D and pop that, change that to D. And if you have a look, what, what happens, what has to happen before D can go? C and B. C and no, just, just C. So look at the arrows. So we just say um, just C. Sorry. C and how long? Now, D is a dummy, a dummy thing. So it, it takes zero to do. Um, so that's why sometimes they say that. And so then if we look at E, what has to happen before E happens? A, and it also takes three. If we look at F, F takes four. But what has to happen before F takes place? Yeah. So what we don't really actually, can we, we don't really actually have to have this one in here because D is, that they've labelled that as D as a dummy, a dummy activity. And the reason why, we just have to have that dummy activity is because with, if you look at F, C, F has to have B happen, but it also has to have C happen. So that's why we've got to have that dummy code in there. So we're going to put the C in there. So then if we look at, and what are we up to? E, F, and we say G. So what has to happen for G? Just C and G takes two. Um, if we look at, what else can we look at? I'll just go, I'm going to H. So H takes two. And what has to occur for H, H to happen? E. Okay. Um, then we've got, if we look at I, I, what leads into I? G and I takes one. And then if we look at um, H, I, J, what has to happen for J to happen? E. e. And it takes six and H I J K. So K takes seven. And what has to happen for this one? We have to have F, H, and I. Okay, good. And then this last one. So that's why we've run out of table because I actually shouldn't have put that dummy one in there. But it's okay. We'll just leave that out. And so we've got um, H I J K. Sorry, we're up to L. L and L takes two. And what has to happen for L to happen? J and, and K. Okay. So you can see when you look at this table, if you have a look at it here, you can see there's C. So F has to have B and C happen before it takes it, it goes. But if you look at G, G only needs C to go. So when that happens, so when you see, like, so when you see that C, G only has C, but then you see C as another pre, um, predecessor, that indicates a dummy. So this indicates the double up. This indicates we need a dummy, a dummy activity. Okay, so that's why we have to. And then so, and you can see up there in our... Um, diagram, there's that dummy activity. So explain why edge D is required, so the dummy activity. And the dummy edge D is required as activity C is the only immediate predecessor for activity G. So that's what I was saying. So because G only has C, it can't be connected to anything else. So, but we need C to happen before F, and so therefore... Um, we need to put a dummy there. And so then there's that little explanation there. And I think it's on your notes um, there for that.
So they want us to draw the activity network that matches this table and any W activities accordingly. So I've had a look through the table and I can see that, see how when I've highlighted down there, I've got F, um, it is a, uh, it's a, um, a predecessor for I, but then if you look at J, J has F and H. So because J has needs two, but I only wants to have F, that's indicating there's gonna have to be a dummy in between them. So let's go and we'll start drawing the activity. So we're gonna start, we've got the start, okay? And we've got A and B come out with no predecessors. So I've got A and I've got B. Okay, so I might just tick as I go through. Now, C comes off of A, so I can go, all right, so I'm going to draw a C. So just remember, don't, don't chop them off yet because you might then see um, something connecting. So D has B and C. So when I see that, I know I'm going to connect these two together and then I'll have um, D coming out. So activity D. All right, so we've done those two. Then E comes out of A, so that's okay to draw straight coming out of A. Um, so we've done that. And F also comes out of A. So I've got another one coming out, F, out of A. Okay. So, and then we have a G ha comes out of um, F. So I've got to do that. So it comes out of F only. And then H has D, E, and G. So you can see then, um, so what does H has D? So I'm going to join these ones up. E and G, sorry. And then I've got H. Okay. And then we've, so we've done this one. And then I've got I comes out of F. So that means I've got another activity coming out here, out of F, I. So I've done that one. Now it's saying that J has to come out of F as well. But if I put, um, so I need it, but if I put like a J line coming out of um, F, then it would mean that, also, all the things near it is also a predecessor and stuff like that. So what we want to see, we need it to come out of H as well. So see how J has to come out of H? So when you see the, the dummy one, so you know F is going to have, something connecting with F is going to have a dummy code. So what you do is the, the letter that's not the dummy part, you draw that out. So you know J has to come out of H. Draw that one, and then we're at the finish. So then it would end. Now, because I had nothing else to talk um, except, so I is also at the end. And then we just have to connect this um, J has to have F happen too. So what I can do is I'm going to put a dummy one from F into the beginning of J. Okay, so there's my dummy activity. Okay, so a dummy activity is zero. So I can see there that, that that's the dummy activity. So I can see that links up F to happen, to be finished right before I start J. Okay, so there's the dummy activity. So it says draw the activity um, network for this one, this table. So down there I've highlighted, I can see C and C. Are repeated there and if C is only to becoming the predecessor for F that means I must gonna have a dummy because they're also saying E has to have um, C as a predecessor so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start the diagram so I've got um, I'll just do it here so here's the start and I've got A um, so I'm doing A and I've got B coming out because they don't have anything before them. Then C has um, A. So C comes out of A. So I might just go like that. 
and B, so I've done this one, this one, this one. D comes out of B, all right, so I'll do that one, D. And then I have, here now I have E comes out of C and D. Now, because the D is, by, you know, not a repeated one, I will definitely have that coming out um, after that. So I'm going to say E can definitely come after the D. But I have to link up that C with it as well. So this is where I'm going to pop that dummy code or dummy activity. So there, if I do that, now E has to have... Oh, sorry, whoops. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Oh, that's the wrong one, isn't it? So yeah, take that away. We've got... We'll just, let's just leave it at that. We've still got to link up C. But if you look at F, F comes after C. So we'll do that. Sorry, and there's the dummy code. So at the end of C and the start of E. Um, yeah? Is the official direction that comes on? Um, yeah, probably. Yep. So the dummy... So we've got the dummy code there. And then if you... Sorry, and then we've got the last one. G has E and F. So this is where I would just join these two up and have G. And then we'll have the end. So what I'm trying to say is when you see these letters here um, by itself, definitely have it coming out of that. So you can see E definitely came out of the D one. And then if you look at down here, um, we had F and we had C. So definitely have F and C coming out like that. And then you'll go, all right, then the dummy code's got to be somewhere in there. Okay, so let's just quickly do this one. We've got to do the table. The table's a lot easier. So let's start with A. It doesn't have any predecessors. <coughs> then I have B. It comes out of A. And C comes out of A. If I look at A, B, C, D, has B happening occurring it before it? Then I'm up to E. Now, if you look at E, um, we have to have C happen. Sorry. If I look at F, so F's up here, the start of F. So for that to happen, F has to have D, but can you see it also has to have C happen as well. Okay, so that's because of that dummy code. Then F, G, we'll have to have... D, C, and D and C. Um, H, we'll have to have what? E and F. Good. Um, I needs to have G. Um, and J needs to have G because of that dummy one. And also H. Yeah? Have I done them all? H, I, J. Yeah. And there we go. So because we got to the end of G and that goes down to the start of J, that's why G is a precursor. So then if you look at um, this one here, you can see that C, at the end of C, so C has to be before the G and the F and you can see it in there. Okay. Okay.